Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we would look at the future value of an annuity, specifically ordinary annuity. This topic is covered in an introductory financial accounting course, the CPA exam, as well as intermediate accounting. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all my courses. If you like my lectures, please like them share them, subscribe, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people and connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice, additional practice exercises that's going to help you supplement your accounting education and do well on your CPA exam. So if you're looking to improve your accounting performance, check out my website. A prerequisite for this session is the future value of a single amount. That's very helpful. I have the link in the description. It will help you tremendously understand the future value of an annuity. So in the prior session, we looked at the future value of a single amount. And basically, what does that mean? It means if we have $100 today, this is the present value, this is the present amount, and we want to know how much it's going to be worth into the future, we multiply the, the present value by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the nth power, the period. So if we are talking about 10%, we'll take 100 times 1 plus 0.1 raised to the first power, and that's going to give us $110. I always mention, why do I include 1? Why don't I take 100 times 0.1? That's equal to $10, and you have to add the 100 to the original amount. That's why you put 1 plus the interest rate. So this is the formula, or you can go to the tables, n equal to 1, i equal to 10%, and take 100, multiply by the factor, and let's go to the factor, to the future value of a single amount. So the future value of 1 of a single amount, 10%, 1 period, 1.1. So if we'll take 100, if we'll take 100 times the factor 1.1, it's going to give us one hundred and ten dollars. So this is what we learned in the in the uh, in the previous session about the future value of a single amount. Now, now what we need to find out is not the future value of a single amount. We need to find out, and this is more realistic. Where if you are investing, you invest one hundred every month, or one thousand every month, or one thousand every year. Basically, if you put money away in your 401k or, or or if you are purchasing an investment, you put the same amount of money. At a regular interval this is called an annuity again if we don't know what an annuity is it's the same payment at the same interval so every month every quarter semi-annually or annually you'll you you will invest the same amount so what we need to find out is how much all these investments are worth into the future so the future value of an annuity is is the accumulated value of each annuity payment with interest as as of the date of the final payment. To illustrate, assuming a 15% interest rate, the first $100 here, the first $100 that we invest, it's gonna, it's gonna sit with us for two periods. Therefore, we'll take 100 times 1.15 raised to the second power. Simply put, we treated this $100 using this formula, this $100. The second $100, notice it's gonna be with us for only one period. So the second $100, 100 times 1 plus 0.15 raised to the first power. And the last $100, we don't really earn any interest on it. So it's 100 times 1 plus 0.15 raised to the zero power. So if we add them all up, they will add up to $347.25. Now, is there a shortcut to do this? Because sometimes we might have many periods. And the answer is yes. We do have future value table where we could look up n equal to 3 i equal to 15 okay now unfortunately unfortunately we don't have the interest rate for the future value annuity at i equal to 15 but i can find what i equal to 15 what i can do is i can add up because i do have the future value of a single amount at 15 and i have 2 at 15 is 1.3225 one period at 15 is one point right here 
1.1500 and the last payment is exactly one now if i add them up this is five two seven four three so the factor the future value annuity factor is 3.4725 so if i take 100 times 3.4725 i will get 300 $47.25. So simply put, rather than treating this those three one hundred dollar separate payment as separate payments, as separate payments, what I can do, I can use my future value annuity table. So there's a future value annuity table, just like there's a present value annuity table to compute this all at once. So we can use the future value annuity table to find the future value of any amount giving an interest rate and a period of time. So simply put, if we take the payment, the payment times the factor, the factor from the table, the factor is based on N and I, depending on what the factor is, we'll find the future value of an annuity. Simply put, if we are giving the payment and the future value of an annuity, we can find the factor, and from the factor, we can either find N or I, just like what we did in the prior session. But let's work an example to show you how it works. Let's assume A expect to invest $1,000 annually for 40 years. So we have N equal to 40. To yield an accumulated value of 154700 62. So what do we have here is we have the future value of the annuity, 154,762. And the payment is 1,000 on the last date of the investment. For this to occur, what interest rate we must earn? So simply put, they're asking us what interest rate we must earn. So we should take the $1,000 times a factor. We don't know what the factor is. We know in the factor, we know N equal to 40. And that's going to give us 154,762. We can find the factor. How can I find the factor? If I take 154,762 and I divide this by 1,000, that's going to give me the factor. That's, that's not the answer. The factor is just the factor. From the factor, I can back into the answer. So the factor is 154.762. This is the factor. Now, from the factor, I can go to the future value annuity table, n equal to 40. So let's go to the, make sure you are looking in the right table, future value of an annuity, n equal to 40. And I'm looking, wanted the closest to 154.762. And the factor is here. It means I need to earn 6%. So I need to earn 6%. So I was able to find my interest rate. Let's take a look at this example. Steffi there expect to invest $10,000 annually that will earn 8%. So we have I equal to 8%. We have the payment equal to 10,000. How many annual investment? So we, we look, we're looking at N must there makes to accumulate 303,243. So simply put, we know we have the payment is 10,000. So the payment 10,000 times the factor which is, we don't know the factor, equal to 303,243. Now we can find the factor. What's the factor equal to? The factor equal to 303,243 divided by 1,000. So we find the factor is 30.32, 30 30.3243. 30 now this is the factor. And we know from the factor, we are dealing with an I equal to 8%. So let's go to the future value annuity table i equal to eight percent right here we know i equal to eight percent and we need to go across to find the closest thing to 30.324 right here and if we go across we need n equal to 16 we need 16 periods to find to find to find that so that's good let's take a look at number 16. k Mellon plans to, to have withheld, let me just erase this, plan to have withheld $50 from her monthly paycheck. Be careful, it's a monthly. And deposited in the savings account that earned 12% annually. So notice, the deposit is monthly, but the earning is annually. So we have to make an adjustment. Okay, And they tell us here it's compounded monthly. If Malone continue with her plan for two and a half years, how much will accumulate in the account 
on the date of the last deposit. So let, let me show you on a graph what this looks like. So this way, it's it's very important that you can imagine this on a graph. So on a graph, we have something like this. The, the whole period is 2.5 years, but it's monthly. So how many how many months do we have in a year? In a month, in a year, how many months do we have? 12 months. So 12 plus 12 plus 6, because it's two and a half years. That's 24. That's 30. So simply put, she is going to make 30 payments. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So she's going to be making 30 payments of $50 each. How much would that investment be worth at the end if she can earn 12% this is remember this is annually but the deposit is monthly so we know n equal to 30. what is i equal to we have to be careful we have you it's compounded monthly we have to convert the 12 percent divided by 12 because we have 12 months in a year i equal to one percent so when we go to the table we're going to take the 50 dollars times the factor n equal to 30 i equal to one percent so it's right here so we have i equal to 1%, and we're going to go all the way to 30, and the factor is 30.7849. 30.7849. If we take 50 multiplying by that amount, she will have $1,394.25. So the value of this investment is $1,739.25. So that's the answer. Let's take a look at one more example. Let's take a look at this example. The future value of an annuity of an amount plus an annuity. Okay. Star Company decides to establish a fund that will be that will use 10 years from now to replace an aging production facility. And that's very common where the company put money away to replace their property, plant, and equipment. The company will make a hundred thousand dollar initial contribution. So first they're gonna make one hundred thousand dollar one single sum to the fund and plans to make quarterly contribution of 50. So this is so this is a single amount. So the one hundred thousand dollar is only one time, and this is in annuity. The fifty thousand is an annuity. Beginning three months from now. Now the fund earns 12%. So we are dealing with 12% compounded quarterly. So that's important. How much it's being compounded is extremely, extremely important. So what's the value of the fund? Well, we have two things to do. We have to compute the the future value of the single amount, 100,000. This 12% is annually. We're going to take 12% divided by four. So I equal to 3% and N equal to 10 times four n equal to 40. So we're going to be dealing in this example i equal to 3 n equal to 40. Okay now um, first let's find the future value of the single amount future value of 1 n equal to 40. So n equal to 40 i equal to 3 percent and the answer is 3.2620. So we're going to take the 100,000 multiplied by 3.2620 and this amount on its own, this 100,000 will grow up to be $326,200. Now we have to find the $50,000 annuity investment. So we're going to have to multiply it by the factor. We have to multiply it by the factor again, n equal to 40, i equal to 3. i equal to 3, n equal to 40. And the factor is 75. 75.4013 75.4013 and that's equal to three million seven hundred seventy thousand and sixty five dollars those two amounts together will amount to four million ninety six dollars two hundred and sixty five so this is the future value of the amount of this investment the 100,000 alone will grow up to be 326 and that $50,000 quarterly payment will grow to 3,770,065 together they will equal to 4,096,265 i hope you were able to kind of follow in this session the future value but don't worry i will work another few examples that are 
that are a little bit more comprehensive that will include both. If you have any questions uh, about this session, please let me know. And as always, I would like to remind you to visit my website for additional resources like this session. Share it. Please stay safe during those coronavirus days and good luck.